What's up guys, Mikkel here, and one of the most interesting topics the XRP community has been faced with since the start of the Ripple SEC case is why the SEC chose to go after Ripple. Well, in this video, I want to share with you a very interesting clip from an interview from Stuart Alderati, where he talks about this exact question. But I also want to talk about some efforts going on by the XRP community to dig into exactly what happened and why the SEC went after XRP and Ripple. Guys, there are some very interesting things coming out in regards to this. This is something you are definitely going to want to see. Towards the end of the video, though, I want to transition and talk about a very interesting interesting discovery made by two members of the XRP community involving Ripple and one of the most powerful banking families in the entire world. Guys, I really do think what is playing out here is we are watching Ripple and XRP being positioned to be one of the most important fintech companies and fintech assets in the entire world in our future. I want to show you that the largest banking families in the world know what's happening behind the scenes. Make sure to stick around for that. This is huge. Like always, your support means so much to this channel. Make sure if you enjoy videos like this, you take a quick second to like this video and subscribe to my channel. It's really going to help me out so much. Also, if you ever need a good place to buy some XRP or the Flare token, make sure to check out my favorite exchange uphold down in the description of this video. With that said though, let's jump right into it and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So I want to start out this video and talk about a very important effort being put in by a member of the XRP community right now in regards to trying to figure out why the SEC decided to go after Ripple in the first place. After I show you this, I want to break down a very interesting interview of Stuart Alderati where he actually talks about this exact issue and I think his comment here is outstanding and really hits at one of the most important parts of this case. I want to start off though and go over what Ashley Prosper is doing here because this is fascinating and I have a feeling we're going to learn some very interesting things. So Ashley Prosper is actually reaching out to the SEC via a FOIA request and she's trying to obtain any communication between JP Morgan and the SEC specifically involving Ripple and XRP. Now, right now, the SEC is essentially refusing to hand over any information to her. I know we have all heard this before, but essentially she has been going through this process for what feels like six months now, and essentially every single time the SEC says, hey, we're going to have these documents by this date, they ultimately push back the date. Now, I have seen the SEC answer these FOIA requests before, and if there's no documents to be handed over, they simply respond to this email and say, hey, there's no documents, sorry, try again next time. That is not what the SEC is doing here, because there is clearly documents at the SEC between JP Morgan talking about Ripple and XRP. Now, what is so interesting about this is by law, the SEC is required to hand over these documents. And the reason for that is, is because the SEC is a taxpayer funded agency. We deserve to know what is going on at the SEC if we ask a question. So essentially right here, the SEC is purposely not abiding by the law and hiding these documents from the XRP community. Now, in my opinion, there would only really be one reason they would want to hide these documents, and that would be if these documents did say something damning. Now, Ashley Prosper is actually going to have to go through the process of suing the SEC in court to get these documents. So the reason I really wanted to call this out is because if you have a second to go on Twitter and just retweet this tweet and possibly even donate some money in the future if she needs it, please consider it. I know I'm going to be sending some money. I know a lot of people in the XRP community are going to send over some money. She's going to do this either way. She is a very trustworthy person in this community. I've talked to her multiple times. I fully trust that she will be using all the funds to go after the SEC like she said she would. And I'm sure she's not looking for any crazy amount of money, $10, whatever you have. I just thought this was a really cool initiative. I know there is going to be emails at the SEC between JP Morgan specifically talking about Ripple and XRP and I just think this is a super cool thing she's doing. So now I want to move on and actually share with you what Stuart Alderati, the head of Ripple's legal counsel had to say when asked why the SEC went after Ripple and although he kind of dodges the main question here, he makes an extremely important point that is really at the heart of this entire case. Listen up to this, it is absolutely critical. Uh, to your question, why Ripple? 
Um, that is a good question. I'm not sure I have a good answer to it. What I will tell you is that the lawsuit was filed on December 22nd, 2020, on the last day of the prior administration when Jay Clayton was the chair of the SEC. The day after the lawsuit was filed, Jay Clayton left office, and within two weeks of the lawsuit being filed, the entire senior leadership team that was, I think, involved in the decision to file the lawsuit left the SEC. So why Ripple? I'm not really sure. I think we can all venture a bunch of different guesses. Maybe the, the SEC was tired of playing whack-a-mole with some smaller tokens, and they felt that um, if they could go after Ripple and indirectly attack the digital asset XRP, which Ripple relies on uh, to facilitate its cross-border payments, maybe they thought that they can send a broader message to the entire market. But I think what they've learned is uh, that if you challenge a well-resourced company, uh, that well-resourced company can put on a very robust defense and really expose the SEC that what they're doing in this case is not applying the law. It's not a faithful allegiance to the law. They're seeking to remake the law, and they don't have the power to remake the law. Only Congress can remake the law. So I thought it was pretty interesting that Stuart Eldorati's initial reaction to why the SEC filed this case against Ripple had to do with Jay Clayton leaving the SEC the day after the case was filed alongside most of the other senior management at the SEC involved in this case. The reason why I think this is so interesting is because it really lets us know what Stuart Eldorati thinks about the merits of this case. This lets me know he thinks these people at the SEC were purposely attacking Ripple rather than bringing this lawsuit in good faith. I have a feeling that he agrees with John Deaton and many people in the XRP community who think that this lawsuit was actually used as a weapon against Ripple to try to stifle innovation. It is clear if you look at Ripple's partners and Ripple's access to the traditional financial system, they are leaps and bounds ahead of every other cryptocurrency company out there. I think both John Deaton and Stuart Eldorati would agree that this lawsuit was likely used as a weapon to hold back the innovation and try to let either some of the other legacy players catch up or try to allow certain cryptocurrency projects to catch up, maybe such as Ethereum which just so happened to be given a free pass a couple years earlier. But I think the other very important comment that Stuart Alderati makes here that is critical is that the SEC is not applying the law in this case, they are trying to remake the law. We know at the core of this case is the issue that the SEC is trying to call XRP itself the security. We also know that the only law defining what a security is that is applicable in this case is the Howey test and never once in the 76 years since the Howey test was passed has the asset itself been called the security. What the SEC did here is completely out of line. They essentially made up this case to try to reinvent the law to try to jam cryptocurrencies under their jurisdiction. Well, the bad news for the SEC, but good news for us and the rest of the cryptocurrency industry is that Ripple assembled an all-star legal team that brought this issue to the front of the case, and now I believe we have a higher chance than ever of getting a direct ruling on XRP in the secondary market not being a security, and don't kid yourself. The SEC could win on some small issues in this case, the SEC might win on some certain sales and get a big fine from Ripple that makes it in all the headlines, but at the end of the day, the only win that matters here both for Ripple and XRP holders is that XRP itself is deemed not a security, so let's hope that decision comes sooner than later. And I want to finish this video off and just share with you a very interesting connection that has really been happening behind the scenes between Ripple and the Rothschilds. Now, if you don't know the Rothschilds, just understand they are one of the most important, one of the most powerful families in the entire world, specifically involved in banking. According to very unreliable sources probably, their net worth is probably bigger than this, they have about 1.2 trillion dollars, so let's just say they have their hands in everything important. 
Well, what we are finding out is that they actually have some very serious ties to Ripple and XRP. Take a look at this by Lord Vendetta, a former Ripple employee who has been the head of XRP institutional liquidity is now working at the Rothschild Investment Bank. Not only that though, take a look at this and this is one of the more shocking things I have ever seen. This was by Darren Moore Jr. in 2019 and we can actually see in the Rothschild family fund, they are directly calling out an investment in Ripple's XRP. This is absolutely shocking to me because we always see in the mainstream, digital assets are evil, no one's going to use digital assets, they're all speculative, banks are never going to use them, but what we're seeing behind the scenes is the exact opposite. These large banking corporations, these families of extremely high net worths are investing in the infrastructure. They know Ripple and XRP are going to be a critical solution in bringing our financial system into the next era and they are investing in the infrastructure, they are investing in the assets while it gets built behind the scenes and while the public is trying to be fudded out. It's stuff like this that makes me look back at this entire Ripple SEC case and say this entire thing might have just been a smokescreen so that the infrastructure could have been built behind the scenes while retail was scared out. I think ultimately one day we will know the answer to this, but right now we just need to finish the battle against the SEC so XRP can get the clarity it needs to be a critical asset in this system. Anyway guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does mean so much. And for now, Miggle out.